Great to be here with you this morning. Great to be part of a service where we've been able to, uh, to honour and to hear testimonies. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Phil. And uh, this morning it's just my job to, to pull things together in the short time that we've got left. And uh, as I do that, I want to ask you a question. And it's this. What is it that you are really good at? What is it that you are really good at? Now, when I ask that question, I reckon we've probably got three types of people in the room. There'll be those people who can reel a list off as long as they're arm. There'll be those people who are probably saying, I don't really know. And there'll be those people who give you that response, the same response you get when you ask the children, what have you learnt at school today? And they say, nothing. <laughs> I've asked myself that question this week. What is it that you're good at? And I've thought about it, and there are a few things that sprang to mind. I'm not bad at quizzes. I've got a fairly good general knowledge. Um, I'm quite musical. I play the piano. I even have a singing qualification. Some people might say I'm good at telling jokes. (laughs) Some people might not. I have a mind, my friends would say, for useless information. For instance, I can tell you the result and scorers of every FA Cup final for the last 50 years. You can test me afterwards if you like. I can say the alphabet backwards as quickly as I can forwards. No, you can, I'll, I'll do it afterwards. There are, however, some things I'm not so good at. I've been a qualified teacher for about 17 years, and in all those years since I qualified, I've never once taught an art lesson. And there's a very, very good reason for that. I'm not arty, I'm not very practical either. Um, Susie and Adam moved into their home about four and a half years ago, and Claire and I said, we'll come round, we'll help you to settle in and do any odd jobs that might need uh, some help with. So Adam said, would you mind filling up the holes in the bedroom walls so that they'll be ready to paint? So he gave me the polyfiller and the, whatever it was, trowel thingy. <laughs> Half an hour later, I'm still filling in the same hole. I am just not good at DIY. But in all seriousness, let me ask you that question again. What is it that you are really good at? Because if you're really honest with yourself, there'll be something. You might be good with your hands, better than me. You might be good at maths. You might be a good cook. You might be hospitable. You might be a good listener. You might be a really good friend. I could go on. But this morning, let me tell you something. Each one of you in this room this morning is not an accident. And you all have talents. And they are, they are talents that God has given to you. Let me read one verse from Ephesians chapter 2 that says this. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You are unique in God's sight. He goes further than that. He says you are a masterpiece. And he's blessed you with talents and skills that are unique to you. Skills that you can invest into the lives of other people. And as I said before, it's been great this morning to acknowledge our key workers We've acknowledged their skills, their talents, their commitment and dedication to all that they do. But the very simple fact this morning is this. If you love Jesus, if you're a follower of God, then you are a key worker. You are a key worker for him. I don't know who said it. And I don't even know if I got the quote right. I was trying to find it. But somebody said about football... Football's a game where thousands of people sit in the stand doing nothing 
watching 22 men, men running around, or women, doing everything. Those people sitting on the sidelines are doing nothing. Let me tell you this morning, if you are a follower of Jesus, you can't sit on the sidelines. Serving God is a non-negotiable. What did the end of that verse say? It said, he made us a masterpiece so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Let me read you something else. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Wow, we get to serve God with the talents that he's given us. It's like we are working for him. And when we serve God and when we work for him, God rewards us. I'm not going to put it on the screen, but there's a verse in a parable that Jesus told. And God longs to say these words to us. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Let me ask this morning, how does God want us to use our talents for him? 1 Peter 4 says this, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. God wants us to use those skills, those everyday abilities to serve other people. Maybe this morning, maybe the thought of stepping out for God terrifies you. Can I just give you some very short advice? Start where you are. Start where you are. And maybe we're scared of taking the first step. Even the thought of just telling somebody, whether it's at work or school or wherever at home, that we're a Christian, maybe that terrifies us. Start where you are. And sometimes as Christians, we're guilty of waiting for God to move before we do. I love that illustration that sees us standing on a diving board above an empty swimming pool. And how often we look down and we say, God, if you fill it, I'll jump. When God's really saying this to us, if you jump, I'll fill it. Start where you are. It's important to recognise that we are key workers. It's important for us to know and recognise that we have to serve where we are. But we also have to remember that we're not on our own. And one or two people said that this morning. We're not on our own because we have a God on our side who always gives us the majority. But the key workers that we've acknowledged this morning don't do their jobs, most of them anyway, in isolation. I know that in my team at work at school, I'm a teacher in Blackburn, I could not have done things on my own. Key workers are part of an effective team. And in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the church as being a body, and we've all got different roles and different parts to play. And in verse 18 of that chapter, it says this, Our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. So not only has God made us unique, not only has he made us his masterpiece, but he's placed us in our own unique place. God has put you somewhere where only you can do what he needs you to do. And God asks us to use those gifts, those skills, those abilities, wherever we are, to encourage, to help others, and to further his kingdom, whether that's in Bolton, wherever you live, further afield and around the world. Romans 12 verse 4 says, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. There are many ways that you can be that key worker, that you can serve God. We have some great teams here at King's. Some of you are part of them. 
Maybe that's something that you could get involved in. And I know some of those teams are operating slightly differently at the moment. But why not get involved in a team? Play your part in that way. Whether it's on a Sunday or whether it's in the week. Why not do that? Maybe you can be a key worker closer to home. Maybe there's a neighbour on their own that you can help. Maybe you can bake a cake. It's not really my bag, not my thing. I'm sure if I took my neighbour a cake and they ate it, um, they may not live to tell the tale, I don't know. But maybe you can make your neighbour's day with a cake and a conversation. Maybe you can mow the lawn. Maybe you could babysit for somebody who doesn't get the opportunity. And again, not easy to do that at the moment. But maybe you can help somebody who's caring for somebody else. And what about praying? I'm so grateful for the people who take time to pray for me. And if you can literally do nothing else, then pray. Let's not forget that if we are key workers, we're in a battle. We are always in a battle. And prayer is something that we can all do. Whatever talents God has given you, invest them into his kingdom, his service, and into benefiting others. And as we draw to a close this morning, here's my challenge for you today. As you sit in your chair this morning, as you leave, as you spend the day, the next few days, I want you to think about how are you going to serve if you don't already? And if you do, how can you serve in a different way to give glory to God? Not as a duty or as a chore, but as a response to what God's done for you. Think about the work he's done in your life. Think about the amazing testimonies we've heard this morning. Think about what God can do. Let me finally read from Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is speaking and he says this, verse 14. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. This morning, as 2020 draws to a close, let's not sit on the sidelines. Let's get involved. Let's remember that we can be part of a team. And the most amazing privilege is serving God. The most amazing thing is that Jesus chose us, that gave gave us individual, unique abilities and skills. This morning, as I said before, start where you are. Start exactly where you are. Maybe you're here this morning and you're thinking, well, How can I be a worker, a key worker for God when I don't even have a relationship with Him? Well, today, as this year draws to a close, God says to you, it's never too late. God wants you to have a relationship with Him. And He's made that possible by sending Jesus as a baby. We've just been celebrating, haven't we? Jesus came into this world with a purpose. He was born to die. And he didn't stay in that manger because he grew. And then 33 years later, Jesus was nailed to a cross. Not because of anything he'd done wrong, but because of what you'd done wrong, what I'd done wrong. And this morning, we can know forgiveness. We can know freedom because of what Jesus has done. So, I want to ask every one of us in this room to stand as we, as we conclude. And just while our heads are bowed, I want us just to acknowledge in our heart that this year, as one, as one ends and as 2021 starts, this year 
I'm going to serve God like never before. Are we up for that this morning? Just lift your hands with me if you feel comfortable doing that. As a sign of just surrendering your life to God. Maybe for the first time. But let's pray together. Father, thank you that you have blessed us with abilities. You've made us unique, that we are your masterpiece. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. And Father, if there's, there's, no, if there's somebody in this room who doesn't know you, who doesn't know what it is to have a relationship with you, I pray that today might be the day. Father, for each of us, may we serve you in 2021 with all our heart, with all our being, with all our lives, with everything that we've got. May we not sit on the sidelines. May we not go about things half-heartedly. Father, over each person in this room and those watching online, I pray your amazing blessing on our lives. Father, will you use us in wherever and whatever circumstance we're in? Father, may we this year see people drawn to you because of the way you've used us. Father, thank you that we're part of a team. Thank you that we're part of the most amazing family. Thank you that I'm here this morning with my brothers and sisters. Key workers together, serving Jesus. Father, today, impress on our hearts the need for us to be a key worker for you. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.